There are some things your eyes may have seen on a regular basis. But the things in this video, you won't have seen any of these too often. These are 20 things that you will see for the first time in your life. Number 20. Of a guy popping the grass bubble. A lawn bubble is a strange phenomenon that can appear in grass after heavy rains. It is difficult to explain. Rainwater seeps through the grass's thatch and down to the root and rhizome layer, but it is unable to drain any farther owing to the extremely wet soil underneath the grass's root system. This can also happen if plastic sheeting has been laid beneath the lawn to prevent weed growth. This normally occurs when the soil is poor, and then good soil may be poured on top of the sheeting to improve the situation. One drawback of this method is that it might cause lawn bubbles to appear, which are not ideal for your perfectly manicured lawn ready for a game of croquet with all of your well-to-do British acquaintances. But how to deal with them? Well, as we can see in this clip, here's what happens when you pop a grass bubble. In 2016, scientists in Siberia discovered 15 grass blisters that contained methane that was flowing out of the permafrost and leaking into the atmosphere. Because of the decomposition of plant materials, these deadly bubbles were also filled with carbon dioxide. Microbes beneath the grass were chewing through dead leaves and releasing gases, which resulted in the formation of these bizarre lawn bubbles, also known as lawn blisters. Like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 19. How Dolls Are Made Vinyl, also known as polyvinyl chloride, is used to make the majority of plastic dolls. PVC compounds, which are the world's second most used thermoplastic after polyethylene, are supplied by major resin suppliers. Vinyl chloride is the primary building component of PVC, and it is transformed to PVC using a suspension process. Prior to usage, all PVC must be compounded. Rigid composites are mostly made up of resin, 85-90%, to and flexible PVC is made up of 40-60% to resin. Plasticizers, stabilizers, processing aids, lubricants, pigments, and filters are among the other additions. Some doll bodies are also composed of polyethylene, a colorless, flammable gas that is derived from ethylene. In the presence of a catalyst, this gas is exposed to high temperatures and pressures, converting it to a polymer. Various paints for face characteristics, nylon for hair and cotton and thread for clothes are among the other raw materials utilized in doll creation. To create doll body pieces, two primary plastic forming procedures are employed. A procedure known as rotational molding is used to create the heads and limbs. Rotational molding is used to create hollow, seamless items with consistent wall thickness in a variety of sizes and forms. If money is a problem, blow molding is sometimes employed to create the torso since it is a faster and more cost-effective approach. Truly fascinating. Number 18. Potter Jet Cutting Through 3-Inch Thick Aluminum Metal 4x6 Cutting metal with water? Are you crazy? Well, it turns out that it truly is possible. A water jet cutter, also called a water jet, is an industrial instrument that can cut a wide range of materials using an extremely high-pressure jet of water or a combination of water and an abrasive substance. The term abrasive jet refers specifically to the use of a mixture of water and abrasive to cut hard materials such as metal, stone, or glass, while the terms pure water jet and water-only cutting refer to water jet cutting without the use of added abrasives, often used for softer materials such as wood or rubber. 
During the manufacture of machine parts, water jet cutting is frequently employed when the materials being cut are sensitive to the high temperatures created by other processes, such as plastic and aluminum. It is the recommended approach. Water jet cutting is used for cutting, shaping, and reaming in a variety of sectors, including mining and aerospace. While the use of high-pressure water for erosion dates back to the mid-1800s, with hydraulic mining, thin jets of water as an industrial cutting instrument did not arise until the 1930s. The use of high-pressure water focused into a beam via a nozzle is common to all water jets. The majority of machines do this by passing the water via a high-pressure pump first. The capacity to cut material without interfering with its intrinsic structure is a significant advantage of the water jet, as there is no heat-affected zone. Number 17. Fresh water meets seawater. An estuary is a brackish water feature that is particularly contained along the coast, with one or more rivers or streams flowing into it and a free access to the open sea. Estuaries are an example of an ecotone, which is a transitional zone between river and marine habitats. Tides, waves, and the entry of saline water have an impact on estuaries, as can fluvial factors like freshwater flows and silt. Estuaries are among the most productive natural environments on the planet because the mixing of seawater and freshwater generates high amounts of nutrients both in the water column and in the sediment. Most present estuaries were developed during the Holocene era, when sea levels began to rise around 10,000 to 12,000 years ago. Drowning river eroded or glacially scoured valleys, estuaries are usually classed based on geomorphological characteristics or water circulation patterns. Although some of these water basins may not technically fulfill the above description of an estuary and may be entirely saline, they can be referred referred to as bays, harbors, lagoons, inlets or sounds, soil erosion, deforestation, grazing, overfishing, and the filling of wetlands are all causes that cause estuaries to degrade. Estuaries are fascinating to physicists because of the density differential between fresh and salt water. The lighter fresh water rises over the denser salt water when river water meets seawater. Under the outflowing river water, seawater enters the estuary and pushes its way upstream along the bottom. Number 16. Alcatraz Prison from its inception in the 19th century through its peak in the mid-20th century, when some of America's most notorious criminals were housed there, the infamous Alcatraz gradually acquired a reputation that made it the world's most well-known prison. This renowned prison, known as The Rock, was erected on a tiny rock island in San Francisco Bay. In 1907, Alcatraz was designated as the Western United States Military Prison, and work on its extension started. The main jail block and adjacent structures were completed by 1912, and the institution progressively began to expand its inmates. The bulk of the inmates who were transported there caused issues in other prisons, and the high security afforded by the facilities as well as the island's natural defenses contributed to its infamy. Many notable gangsters and criminals were incarcerated there during the Prohibition era of the 1930s, including Al Capone and Machine Gun Kelly. No prisoner has ever been able to successfully escape Alcatraz in its entire history. In total, 36 inmates attempted to flee, 23 were apprehended, 8 died while on the run, and 5 are still missing and presumed drowned. Alcatraz Prison was formally decommissioned on March 21, 1963, barely two years after the most famous jail escape attempt of all time due to rising costs and its isolated location. Number 15. Brick Road Lang Machine 
Laying paving bricks is arduous and time-consuming labor, at least if you do it in the traditional manner. Hank Van Kuyk, the director of the Dutch industrial firm Vanku, clearly determined that squatting slash kneeling and moving bricks into place on the ground was too slow, so he designed the Tiger Stone paving machine. The road-wide gadget is fed loose bricks and, as it goes along, spreads them out on the road. One to three human operators stand on the Tiger Stones platform, manually moving loose bricks from the hopper to the slanted pusher slot. The bricks must be put into the pusher in the appropriate completed design. Gravity then leads them to tumble down into the sand in a single road-wide layer. The tread tracked machine is electrically driven and has minimal moving components, resulting in little noise and low maintenance. Built in sensors that follow the curbs help it stay on track. According to Vanku, a machine with two operators can pave at least 3,200 square feet of road every day. But a single conventional paver, on the other hand, and knees can only cover 75 to 100 square feet. The Tiger Stone comes in 13, 16, and 20-foot widths with prices ranging from $81,485 to $108,655. Many homeowners would undoubtedly prefer to see a much smaller version that they could hire to create garden walks and patios. Number 14. Corn Snake Lyska Shedding Skin That Eats Him Snakes are one of a kind among animals for a variety of reasons, one of which is their capacity to lose their complete skin. Why do snakes lose their skin in its entirety? Something we don't see in other animals. Simply said, snakes lose their skin when it no longer fits or when it becomes old or worn out. Snake skin does not develop with them, therefore they outgrow it. They shed their outer layer of skin as a result of this. According to Animal Planet, snakes can shed their skin as frequently as once a month, although it's normally just a few times a year at most. Ectasis is the process of snakes shedding their skin, and it is influenced by a variety of variables including species age, weather and temperature, nutritional status, and the presence of germs or parasites. Because they are still growing, younger snakes shed more than adults. Snakes frequently lose their skin before or after mating or giving birth. While losing their skin is an important aspect of a snake's growth, it also serves another purpose. According to the Iowa Department of Natural Resources, it aids in the removal of parasites that might damage the snake. Number 13. Whales Bubble Net Fishing Within a group of whales, bubble net feeding is a cooperative hunting approach. It's a complicated, well-coordinated collection of activities, including communication and collaboration, that shows indicators of strong social intelligence. Whales bubble net feed by diving deep beneath schools of fish and stunning and trapping fish closer to the surface, with bubbles released from their blowholes. The endeavor is usually led by one whale who is followed by the remainder of the group. The leader is normally in charge of blowing the bubbles and the other members will surround the fish, swimming in spiral patterns to keep them caught at the surface. Gulpers, as humpback whales are known to be, eat by leaving their mouths open and swallowing anything in their path before closing their lips, forcing water out through their baleen plates, and swallowing the organisms they captured, typically fish and small crustaceans. Whales swimming toward the surface with their mouths open will swallow fish from the school they have herded during bubble net fishing. Observation is used by marine mammal and animal behavior experts for a variety of investigations, which is how we learned about the complexity of bubble net fishing. Dr. David Wiley, a National Marine Sanctuary Foundation associate, was the principal researcher on this humpback whale feeding approach. Whales continue to produce seltzer sized bubbles while swimming in upward spirals to corral and capture fish, according to his results. He also found that in order to bubble net eat, humpback whales must cooperate in groups of at least two individuals. Number 12. Underfloor Heating System 
Underfloor heating and cooling is a type of central heating and cooling that uses hydronic or electrical heating devices installed in a floor to achieve interior temperature control for thermal comfort. Conduction, radiation, and convection are used to heat the space. Underfloor heating has been used since the Neoglacial and Neolithic eras. To heat the floor, modern underfloor heating systems may employ electrical resistance components or fluid flowing via pipes known as hydronic systems. For thermal comfort, either kind can be implemented as the principal whole building heating system or as localized floor heating. When a single room is part of a larger multi-room system, certain methods enable for single rooms to be heated, preventing any wasted heat. Electrical resistance may only be utilized for heating. Hydronic systems must be employed when space cooling is also required. Snow slash ice melting for roads, driveways, and landing pads, turf conditioning for football and soccer fields, and frost protection in freezers and skating rinks are all applications that electronic or hydronic systems are well suited for. There are a variety of underfloor heating systems and designs to fit various types of flooring. Number 11. The Hung Na Guest House or the Crazy House Hung Na, often known as the Crazy House, is an unusual house in Dalat, Vietnam, designed and built by Vietnamese architect Dong Viet Na. The building's general design is described as a fairy tale home with sculptured design features evoking natural forms such as animals, mushrooms, spider webs, and caverns. Its architecture has been classified as expressionist with intricate organic non rectilinear features. Nya has recognized the building's design as being inspired by Catalan architect Antoni Gaudi, and tourists have drawn different comparisons between it and the works of artists such as Salvador Dali and Walt Disney. Since its construction in 1990, the building has attracted attention for its distinctive architecture being included in a number of guidebooks and being named one of the world's ten most bizarre structures by the Chinese People's Daily. The guest house features ten themed guest rooms, each with a different animal motif. For example, the tiger room, the eagle room, the ant room, and the kangaroo room, all with themed decor. The Tiger Room, for example, has a big tiger with flashing red eyes on the walls. The Kangaroo Room has a sculpted kangaroo with a fireplace in its belly. And the Eagle Room's fireplace is in the shape of a giant eagle's egg. The animal motif is linked to a certain ethnicity in several of the rooms, adding an extra layer of meaning. The Tiger Room, for example, represents Chinese qualities, while the Eagle Room is big and strong, like Americans, according to Na. Number 10 the most expensive metal in the world. Californianium is a radioactive chemical element with the atomic number 98 and the symbol CF. The element was created for the first time at the Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory in 1950. One of the few transuranium elements with practical uses is this rare element. The majority of these applications rely on the ability of particular californium isotopes to release neutrons. Californium, for example, is utilized to aid in the startup of nuclear reactors and as a neutron source for investigating materials using neutron diffraction and neutron spectroscopy. Prior to 1980, Californium was released into the environment as a result of atmospheric nuclear testing. The radioactive dust gathered from the air after a nuclear explosion contained Californium isotopes with mass numbers 249, 252, 253, and 254. Supernovas were formerly thought to create Californium, however later research failed to find any Californium spectra. In 2008, Californium was discovered in Chbilsky's star. The element is also a lucrative commercial commodity, notably Californium-252. It is in fact the most costly chemical, with each gram costing a whopping $27 million. Consider the following scenario. Californium is the heaviest naturally occurring element on the Earth, and its price reflects that, especially when synthesized for use in nuclear operations. Number 9. The Waterfall at Jewel Shangji Airport in Singapore 
The HSBC Rain Vortex is the world's highest indoor waterfall at 40 meters tall and pouring down from Jewel Shangji Airport's dome-shaped ceiling. Since April 2019, when Jewel first opened its doors, it has been the focus of many people's attention. Many people, however, are unaware of the science behind the rain vortex. The Shangji Journeys crew accompanied the Jewel team to learn more about the seven-story marvel. There are structural components incorporated into the facade of the building to generate the even circular flow of water down the rain vortex. Outside the dome construction, the fins form a network of pipes that transport water to the ring at the center of the oculus. The water is then distributed evenly down the rain vortex via the oculus, giving it a perfect round effect. The water runs all the way down from the roof to the catchment area in the basement 3. The water in B3 is then pushed back up around the building's perimeter to the oculus where the cycle begins again. The rain vortex is cleaned thoroughly on a regular basis in compliance with regulatory regulations. The rain vortex will be out of commission for up to a week while it is being cleaned. Water samples are sent to a lab for testing on a regular basis to ensure that the water fulfills the permitted quality requirements and is safe to fall through the vortex. Number 8. A Woodpecker's Tongue the tongue of a woodpecker wraps around its own head. These tongue bones retract when a woodpecker pecks, stabilizing the head and giving musculoskeletal support. By cushioning the shock, they also protect its brain from nearly 100 grams of force when it's pounding away. Woodpecker tongues are a key part of what makes these birds special, although being rarely noticed by the casual bird watcher. Long specialized tongues along with strong chisel-like beaks allow woodpeckers to obtain food that other birds cannot. But that isn't the only characteristic that distinguishes these organs. Tongues have an unexpected and ingenious role in woodpeckers' high-impact pecking. The hyoid bone of a woodpecker, on the other hand, is quite different in the upper beak of the woodpecker. The core of the muscle-wrapped hyoid is in the nostrils. It forms a V between the eyes, and its two arms wrap entirely around the woodpecker's skull, traveling over the top and around the back before reuniting at the base of the lower beak. The tongue pushes forward, across the length of the beak, and out the end when the muscles around the hyoid contract. The tongue of the woodpecker retracts along the length of the hyoid when those muscles relax. The tongue of a woodpecker is so long that it must be curled around the back of its owner's head. Number 7. Northern Blue Banded Bee the blue banded bee, Amagilla cingulata, is a native of Australia. Several scientific institutions are now investigating how A. cingulata helps agriculture through its unique buzz pollination. Johann Christian Fabricius, a Danish entomologist, originally described A. cingulata in 1775. The name cingulata comes from the Latin word cingulum, which means belt, and refers to the bee's bands. There are approximately 250 species in the genus Amagilla, although some are almost indistinguishable from A. cingulata and are frequently mistaken with it. It has faint opalescent blue stripes on its abdomen, unlike honeybees. The male may be recognized from the females by the number of full bands, which are five for males and four for females. Along the coast of New South Wales and Queensland is where A. cingulata lives, and these blue bees will normally be found in cities, woods, forests, and heathlands. Although A. cingulata is capable of stinging, it is not as aggressive as other bees, they seem to be faster than other bees in their movements. During the night, the males cling to plant stalks. Unlike social animals such as honeybees, which live in enormous colonies, they are solitary organisms with single females living in tunnels in soft sandstone or clay. Many creatures, including birds, frogs, and cane toads, prey on A. cingulata. The neon cuckoo bee, Therius nitidulus, parasitizes its nests. Human activities such as the clearance of riverbanks in the Kabulcha River may pose a threat to this bee's nesting habits. Number 6. 
Moth builds a shelter out of sticks and carries it on its back to hide from predators. This diligent moth was seen carrying a pile of twigs, several times the size of its body, so it understands what it's like to carry a big load. As it went uphill along a moss-covered tree in Southeast Asia, the super strong insect had its house heaped on its back. The moth was so stressed that it had to move sideways millimeter by millimeter while balancing the twig structure on its back. The shattered twig creates a protective case, a little nest-like structure where the insect may hide and pupate into a silk moth securely. Tourist Thaoli saw the tenacious bug, subsequently identified it as a big worm moth in Muli Borneo. While resting or in the pupa stage, the cases are connected to rocks, trees, or fences, although they are otherwise movable. If a moth is stuck to a live host, such as a tree, it is known to put its head and thorax out of the top hole of its nest to feed on the host's leaves, occasionally resulting in the host's death. The moths are noted for making their cases out of whatever they can find. Leaves, sand, soil, lichen, or plants are usually employed, and the insect creates two holes in the construction, one to push its head out of the top and the other to slip out when they pupate into adult moths. When the moth caterpillar is ready to pupate, it seals one of the openings. As soon as the bug hatches, the cases of the Psychidae family of moths are attached to the other components using the moth silk. Number 5. Al Hasa Flying Stone Floating Stone in Saudi Arabia on social media, a photo of a rock that looks to be flying in the air defying gravity is circulating. It is said to have originated in Saudi Arabia. Is this rock truly floating in the air, or is it attached to the ground by tiny pillar-like structures? The rock looks to be floating because the pillars are so little in comparison to the boulder. Which of these theories concerning this rock do you believe? It's supposed to be near the Saudi Arabian oasis of Al Hasa. Al Hasa Oasis is the world's biggest oasis covering 33 square miles. The oasis, which is supplied by a massive underground aquifer and watered by the flow of more than 280 artisan springs, has more than 2.5 million palm trees, including date palms and permits cultivation all year in an area that is otherwise sand desert. al Asa is part of an area noted for its exceptional tailoring skills, particularly in the creation of Bisht, a traditional men's cloak. Historically, al Asa was the largest city in Al Bahrain province, accounting for the majority of the region's population and agricultural production. Number 4. Baby Sea Lion Rides a Turtle in Galapagos because this newborn sea lion was too lazy to walk, he opted to take a ride on the back of a sea turtle in the Galapagos Islands. It's probably not the fastest beach ride, but the charming sea lion doesn't seem to mind. I'm not sure how much the turtle liked it, though. The Galapagos Islands are a volcanic archipelago in the Pacific Ocean, located on each side of the equator. They are a part of Ecuador. The islands are noted for their vast number of endemic species, which Charles Darwin investigated during HMS Beagle's second expedition. His observations and collected aided in the development of Darwin's natural selection theory of evolution. The Galapagos Province of Ecuador, the Galapagos National Park, and the Galapagos Marine Reserve are made up of the Galapagos Islands and their surrounding waters. Spanish is the primary language spoken in the islands. The population of the island is little more than 25,000 people. Semi-desert vegetation, comprising shrublands, grasslands, and dry woodland, covers the majority of the Galapagos. High elevation locations on a few of the islands where temperatures are lower and rainfall is heavier are home to humid climate forests and shrublands, as well as montane grasslands and at the highest altitudes. On the islands, there are over 500 kinds of native vascular plants, including 90 types of ferns. There are over 180 vascular plant species that are indigenous to the area. Number 3. Fan Umbrella with Water Spray 
This umbrella has a built-in fan located just below the highest intersection of the umbrella, where the frame resides. It's a nice breeze added to the storm. Cooling air is blown from above, so you're walking around with your own fan on. When it's hot outside, this umbrella directly relieves your head of the exhausting heat. You can also get a rechargeable battery with UV protection so that you can keep yourself protected from UV radiation. It's good for your noggin. It includes a built-in cooling fan in the canopy that rotates around to provide a breeze, and it can also shoot fine mist down to provide further cooling relief when a water bottle is linked to the handle at the bottom of the umbrella's handle. Just in case you're the kind of person who likes to walk with an umbrella and likes to be rained on at the same time. Number 2. Home Jellyfish this gorgeous oval-shaped creature has eight rows of small comb-like plates on its body, which it beats to propel itself through the water. As it swims, the comb rows scatter light, creating a shimmering rainbow appearance on the water's surface. Some comb jellies are voracious predators of other jellies, and they have the ability to extend their stomachs to contain food that is nearly half their own size. A jelly is a basic organism with only a few specialized organs making it a good candidate for study. Most jellies are capable of detecting chemical traces in the water, which allows them to identify food, and many are endowed with a gravity-sensitive structure known as a statocyst, which offers direction in the water to aid in food detection. During some stages of its lifetime, a jellyfish can be extremely sensitive to the quality of the water. Changing health of jelly populations may be a sign of broader environmental challenges to come. According According to researchers, despite the fact that it appears alien, a jelly's soft form is ideally suited to its surroundings. Despite having a thin epidermis, it has a body that contains more than 95% water. Number 1. Smart Bird Uses Bread as Bait for Fishing Check out this video in which a green heron uses a piece of bread as a piece of fishing bait. It's speculated that the bird got the idea after witnessing fishermen do similar things, such as tossing bread into the water or placing maggots or worms on their hooks to entice fish into their nets to eat their bait. According to experts, herons are the undisputed champions of the avian world when it comes to bait fishing. There are 12 species of bird that are known to employ bait as a method to capture fish, and seven of those species are members of the heron family. These birds have discovered that areas where humans routinely feed ducks and swans, typically with bread, are excellent fishing spots all around the world. So why didn't the heron simply eat the bread instead of exchanging it for a fish? We can only guess that the heron understands that fish protein is a more efficient source of energy than carbs, and that it is thus worthwhile to forego the piece of bread in exchange for the fish. Did this video blow your mind? Which was the most unique thing on our list today? Let us know in the comments below. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time.